Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil product highlight video. Today is gonna to be a bit of a sales presentation, but I think it's important because we get a lot of customers asking about the difference between our Build a Flower and our Build a Bloom. And right away, it's pretty easy to see that this one's bulky, this one's a lot lighter. This really is a top dress, so it's meant to put on top of the soil, and that both gives room for the roots to grow into new material and also provides a lot of the nutrients that's needed for flowering. So we'll discuss how we designed it and why. The other thing is this one is a water soluble and you can see it's a 2105 with 10% calcium. And that was very important for us to hit these certain ratios. So we'll discuss that. The other thing that I'd like to address is this is a water soluble. Some people top dress with it. This is a top dress. Some people brew compost tea with it. So how you use these is it's not one dimensional, but I do want to help bring you up to speed so that you could be that flexible by knowing exactly how to use things based on the ingredients. And I think telling you the whole story will, will really help you get there. So the Build a Flower was the first out of these two that we designed and it came out of this blog article which was from February 2014. So that was like eight years ago. And it still holds to, true today. So I'm just gonna really quickly cycle through it. I'm gonna read it, go over some of the high points as far as what we were discussing on how to top dress your organic grow. And that's where this product evolved from to make it easier for people. You know, when we first started Build a Soil, I was really targeting people that knew what they wanted, were looking for rare ingredients, and would seek us out to buy them because they knew we had the best and we had hard to find ingredients. But we quickly realized we were eliminating maybe 80, 90% of our customers that would like to, to benefit from these products but didn't know how to individually buy each one and make their own material with it. So to cut out some of that confusion, we wrote a blog article, and you can still find that at the Build a Soil website. You can Google, what should I top dress my organic grow with build a soil and it'll pull this up from Google. Since we've started to make products, we've brought a lot more people in to be able to benefit and experience the results that you get from growing the build a soil way and living soil. So uh, let me just read this and then I will talk about both products, show you what they look like so that by the end you clearly know where we came from, why the ingredients are in there and how to use each of these respectively, uh, respectively and why they're different. So what should I top dress my plants with to ensure that the soil has enough food and everything will continue to cycle properly? Furthermore, how do I make sure I'm not losing out on any yield? This is a multi-pronged question, but I'll do my best to answer it. And you can also see the email that I wrote below as a personal response to a customer. That's in here. Number one, mulching is huge. Keeping the top few inches of soil moist and alive will keep this whole system we designed into a powerful plant growing machine. This layer between the mulch and the soil will house many forms of life and also allow the plant's rhizosphere to really take off and stay active in the top layer of the soil. In my opinion, mulch also eliminates overwatering just to keep that top moist. I know many growers will constantly moisten the top of the soil while the lights are constantly drying it out. It's like a never-ending battle until the canopy is full, finally shading the soil. How important is mulch? I'll let you decide. Number two, if your soil is mixed up with all the right stuff, this may not even be necessary. So even in 2014, we were telling people, you don't have to do all this stuff. And they were demanding, but what all, what's all the stuff that I can do? <laughs> and so I don't think this is ever gonna change. It's just a process that we all go through. So one of the challenges I have with most organic growers is the constant desire to add more stuff and more nutrients as a leftover habit from all the years using nutrient grow bottles. If you feel this way, you aren't alone. I deal with it too. Now I've found that some growers are brand new and they start with living soil and I love it. But initially when living soil was becoming popular, it was only experienced growers that had already tried hydroponics that were gonna try living soil, at least in its complete form. So things have changed a little bit. A lot more beginners can start with living soil but that's where this came from. So uh, let me continue. If you can't kick the habit, this top dress regimen shouldn't hurt anything and will at least give you some peace of mind. If your soil does need a little help, this will do the trick. I tend to notice that these top dresses are more necessary in smaller soil containers. The biology of a small five gallon container has to be constantly working at maximum potential to keep up with a fast growing plant. That pressure is eased in larger volumes of soil. So take that into consideration. Keep in mind, once your soil ages, it just keeps getting better and better and you may not have to do any of this. In a small container, you'll probably have to do it forever. In a large container, if you're not keeping up with some sort of re-amending, you'll probably have to top dress perpetually as we are always taking from the soil and we never want to deplete it completely. We we'll want to have a loop where what we take, we add back and it's a, it's a never ending cycle. So here's the email that I sent to one client that was asking this question. This is in 2014. I wrote, great question. I'm in the process of designing a few packages for that purpose. You know, business is all about necessity and when people have problems and you solve them, it creates some value. And so that's why we created this product. 
Um, I wrote, I would use this while vegging a couple of weeks before going into flower. There are many ways to approach top dressing a plant, but here's a method that I really like. For every five gallons the plant that it is in, I would add the following. One tablespoon of kelp meal, two tablespoons of fish bone meal, four tablespoons of gypsum. Cover up with a half to one inch layer of worm castings across the whole container, put the mulch back on or cover it with some fresh mulch, etc. The mixture is designed this way for a few reasons, and I go on to break down each ingredient that I put in there. Seaweed contains all the major and minor plant nutrients, all trace elements, alginic acid, vitamins, auxins, at least two gibberellins, and antibiotics. The alginic acid is a soil conditioner because it has the ability to absorb and hold massive amounts of water. The seaweed particles do this because the alginic acid in the seaweed combines with metallic radicals in the soil to form a polymer with greatly increased molecular weight. It's just a long way of saying, you know when you get kelp wet, it's kind of gel gelatinous like, and it helps create that structure in the soil. So we, we used to always add kelp to our soil. Now we've since learned that lots of kelp can come with some arsenic. The arsenic that's in there is probably totally safe for humans and is actually organic arsenic, but certain states that allow the growing of cannabis commercially have restricted the level of arsenic to the point where it's kind of ridiculous and they don't determine organic versus inorganic. So if you're a home grower, I absolutely recommend kelp meal, but less is more. You don't need to use tons of it. Um, it can be a little bit high in sodium. It has lots of growth hormones. And it's more about uh, less is more because we're looking for the trace minerals and some of the hormones more than anything. So that's why it's the smallest ingredient on there. This also means kelp can potentially help us keep heavy metals out of our plants. So one of the things that we noticed back in the day is that healthy people that lived a long time, they would eat seaweed. And they believed that when they ate the seaweed with the fish, the alginic acid would help bind some of the mercury and other heavy metals that would be in the fish that they ate constantly. Fish that eats other fish that eats other fish and can accumulate heavy metals. But certainly eating seaweed was not a health problem for many cultures that live a long time. So it's important to kind of relate that stuff to yourself, all right? Kelp meal also contains a high concentration of cytokinins. These cytokinins are great in assisting with reducing internodal stretching and getting a bushier plant. Fish bone meal contains phosphorus, which is easily accessed in a living soil that has been aged and given time to develop a fungal network. You know, I could read these the whole time. I really just want to get to the point of it. The reason why we had the kelp meal uh, when we were discussing this was micronutrients. Then we added the fishbone meal because calcium and phosphorus is huge. When you have compost, worm castings or compost, typically there's a little bit of nitrogen or there's at least organic matter that, that can biologically be uh, turned into nitrogen over time. So when you're doing soil testing, a lot of times you look at your percentage of organic matter and you realize that some of that will turn into nitrogen despite there not being a lot of nitrogen on the soil test. And there's also potassium in there. But if we don't add the fishbone meal or some form of calcium and phosphorus, it's likely to be low in those and not do its job for actually being a flowering top dress. So that's why we recommended that. The next one is gypsum that's in there and that's for calcium and sulfur. Sulfur helps increase the terpenes. It's part of that whole process. You can look it up, but when you add calcium as the heavy and sulfur that helps with flavor, then you've got the fishbone meal for the phosphorus and calcium and the kelp meal for the, uh, all the trace minerals. This information still holds true today. All right, let me get to the bottom. Once this top dress has been applied, then we top that off with as much worm castings as we can afford to use. I usually use like a half inch to one inch layer, but you can use a couple inches across the whole container. This will ensure a ton of biology is available right on top of the fresh amendments that we just applied. You can easily add a little bit of neem for pest control. The neem is not 100% needed if you don't have any. Cover all that with mulch. We don't use neem cake as often. I like the karanja cake. I like seed meals. I do like neem cake, but I don't believe it's gonna kill all your gnats. Coot used to tell me back in the day that these fresh castings, when applied properly, would suffocate the gnats by creating that, that layer. But if the castings you're putting in have gnats, that's you know one of the challenges. And I'm happy to report that when we make the build a flower, we've actually taken some steps to eliminate that, so it shouldn't be of concern. But that's that's why the article mentioned it. I hope the blog post assists some of you out there as you are growing. Let me know if you have any questions. Notice, I use mixes similar to this, but these ratios were designed on paper and not thoroughly tested in these exact proportions. Please add more or less as you feel best fit. Just understand the reason with which we added each ingredient to the recommendations listed above. And the good news is organic amendments are pretty conservative. It's more about getting ratios right than hitting the exact amount perfect. So um, I hope that helps explain. And now I think when I explain the ingredients in the build a flower, you'll better understand why we did that. So I've got the Build-A-Flower testing. Um, it tests in at 0.35% nitrogen and 1.8% phosphorus and 0.24% potassium. So this is a high phosphorus uh, availability recipe, which is really good because that's part of what we're looking for as far as a flower top dress. 
ingredients that are in it. You can read on here, but it's a little easier to read from here. It's Oli Mountain Fish Compost, or sorry, Oli Mountain Fish Compost. In fact, let me grab that bag so you can see what it looks like. There it is, Oli Mountain Fish Compost. It's from Belfair, Washington. It is heavy. It is rich, black, dark, and it stains you with humic. It's made from aged hardwood. So it's a hardwood company, you know, wood chips, all sorts of different things they make with hardwood. And all the rest that's left over goes into a compost pile. And then they put whole fish that are caught from Alaska as part of the fishing industry and they put it in there. Very full of nutrients. And because it's got the hard wood that's full of lignin that can lead to the humic, it's that dark black that not only looks really pretty, but it adds a lot of benefits. So that's why we use the Ollie Mountain Fish Compost. Next, we add build a soil worm castings. The idea was to use worm castings or compost, but the creme de la creme is compost and castings combined. And so that's why we made the build a flower the best of both worlds. You don't have to go buy a bag of compost, buy a bag of castings, mix them together. We've done that for you in our machines, and we've also added a few amendments to it. So that's the base. It's, it's pure compost. It's Ollie Mountain Fish compost and build soil worm castings. To that, we add gypsum, Diamond K, uh, water-soluble gypsum. So it's really fine. We also add, instead of the fish bone meal, which I'll bring you full circle, um, ocean-based products and mined products can oftentimes have heavy metals in them. For the home grower, it's not a very concerning amount. Heavy metals are ubiquitous in nature, and it's very important to not be scared of them, but understand them. However, in a commercial grow facility, if we're getting fish bone meal from the ocean, it's likely to have small amounts of heavy metals. And the more that that commercial facility uses those products, the higher the chance that they could have an issue. So we've taken it upon ourselves to find the best ingredients that are more plant-based, that provide similar results to all the testing we've done over the years, but eliminate that heavy metal issue. So let's keep going. We added the gypsum. Now, instead of the fishbone meal, we added a high phosphorus organic rice bran. Tests well on heavy metals. It's grown organically. It's approved for organic use once it's harvested. It's a great material, and it tested at the lab at over 6% phosphorus, which is great. Um, it's hard to get that high availability. Um, next, we have uh, some kelp meal, Thorvin Icelandic kelp meal. Some of the best kelp meal on the market. We want those trace minerals and some of the hormonal benefits. Um, next, we have organic mustard seed meal. So instead of using the neem cake, the mustard seed meal is a seed meal. And if you eat plant-based, you'll know that seeds have a lot of nutrition, similar to the soil. The seed is where all the energy got put. And so we're gonna give that to the soil all ground up. And now mustard seed, it has some enzymes that react when they get wet. And it's like spicy mustard. And it actually kills larvae. It biofumigates the soil as far as fungus. And so world record pumpkin growers, lots of people will use a specific mustard cover crop to grow in their field, or they'll buy the mustard seed meal. We've done that, we use the mustard seed meal, and we mix it into here, and it really helps the process that it comes out totally clean. Next, on top of that, we added our build a soil pre-charged biochar with RootWise microbe complete. Just a small amount to add that more carbon, to add the, uh, the microbes in there, and really when we first started building soil, um, the biochar was so amazing to us, we wanted to put it in everything, and it makes a lot of sense to me. So, that's what's in the Build-A-Flower top dress. And let me show you what it looks like. Dark black and rich. It's totally normal to have chunks of wood in here. That's that hard wood that we're after. That material, when it sits on top of your soil, it insulates, it acts like a mulch, and the feeder roots can dig up in there and access this composted material to get really good quality results. So Build-A-Flower is a must-have. I love doing it. However, if you don't have Build-A-Flower, you have your own compost or some castings, and you have some of the amendments that we talked about, you can just make your own. And if you're doing it right on the container, you don't even need to mix it together. You can just put the amendments down, put the compost on top. Every time you water the compost and the biology will keep those amendments wet, the plant feeder roots will dig into there and you'll have a really healthy grow. So the build a flower, I like to top dress like a week before flower, at worst case, right when you go to flower. Um, if you're gonna have a very short veg time, you could actually put that in there right away. So like for instance, an earth box or a 15 or a 30 gallon container, once you transplant your clones or you're about to flower, um, let's say a short two week veg time, you can just put your clone in and then top dress with this, put your mulch over, and by the time the feeder roots get up there and you flip the flower, it'll start kicking in. So a little bit slow release when it comes to top dress, but one of the benefits of top dressing is it trains these feeder roots to live up there. So the next time you top dress, they can get to it pretty quickly. So I do like to develop that feeder root system by leveraging top dressing. That also acts as a mulch. You can cover it with mulch, Worms go up in there, it creates the whole ecosystem that we're after. Let me discuss the Build-A-Bloom and I'll show you what that looks like. So the Build-A-Bloom is, it came out of necessity. 
not only we're working with larger agricultural farms, we're also working with hemp farmers. And when it comes to growing the organic way, a lot of the methodology out there in hydro is copious amounts of P and K or phosphorus and potassium. When they're doing that, that's like their bloom booster. And so when it comes to living soil, if there's very little in there, it's gonna be hard to match the yield. And so we noticed a significant difference by doing soil testing and properly balancing the calcium, the sodium, the potassium, all these things, especially keeping sodium low, also keeping bicarbonates and chlorides low. And the next, the next monumental task was, how do we find an organic product that we believe in that's high in phosphorus, that's water soluble? Um, I've got a few other ingredients here that we'll talk about. I've got some organic gem liquid fish. Although this is great and it has 3% available phosphorus, this has 10% and you add your own water. This is liquid, so it's harder to ship. This is like a teaspoon per gallon, well this is like an ounce per gallon. So this goes a lot further bang for the buck. This is a great product, don't get me wrong. I really enjoy using it. But one of the little known secrets about liquid fish is that they use food grade phosphoric acid, like for making soda pop. That's how they stabilize it. And that's where some of the phosphorus comes from. Now, this particular product is from a fatty bony fish. And so it's gonna have higher phosphorus from some of those fish bones as well. Um, but knowing that there's phosphoric acid in it, it didn't feel as organic to me. I wanted to find a way around that. And another product, Blue Gold. They've got a, this is the commercial label, but they also have a home grower label and their fusion flowers, it's a, it's a really good product. It works very well. But the reason why you don't hear me shouting it from the rooftops is it's kind of goopy, and it's a little bit harder, we gotta drop ship it because it's so alive, which is not really a burden, but when I look at the ingredients, um, it's got rock phosphate, and it's got some seabird guano and some bat guano. It's also got sodium nitrate, a few things that I typically don't use as my go-to when it comes to the build a soil way. So while I really believe in Blue Gold, I think they're a great company, and think that the way that they use their ingredients is very responsible, and I trust them, I prefer to avoid some of that stuff if I can. And that's, that's really why I lean towards the build -a bloom Another one that I, I love and we do sell quite a bit of is the Organics Alive. This is my box, it's been opened and I'm using it. And this is their PK, their VPK dry soluble. It's a, it's a 0 10 8. So close, this is a 2 10 5. I like to have those aminos to help deliver the phosphorus, but this is microbial created. My one big challenge here is that it doesn't have the calcium with it. And I think that's so important. And so that's why we add the gypsum in here and that's why we add the gypsum in here as well as using a calphose a soft rock phosphate that is lower in heavy metals and you only need to use one teaspoon per gallon so you're barely adding any the way these work together is that we have a water soluble one so if you have smaller containers and you just need to get the nutrients in this works great if you've top dressed and your plants growing large you can mix this in with your top dress or you can water it in to really supercharge that layer and so they they work really well together um, one of the biggest limitations of living soil is that phosphorus and calcium and small amount spoon fed work really well uh, sometimes i go whole grows without grows without using this because it's in a huge bed of soil and i'm confident that using the craft blend and the build a flower top dress works so well the craft blend kind of replaces this because it's so diverse it has the p and the k but when it comes to water soluble, this is our number one go-to product. So let me show you what it looks like. It is water suspendable. It's highly micronized minerals. And so this is only eight ounces of water. We put one teaspoon per gallon, which means one sixteenth of a teaspoon is all that I would actually put in here. Right away, you can see that there's a little bit of white material and that is the water soluble gypsum that'll break down. And the minerals are the calphos. We've also got fulvic acid in here. And there's also some Epsom, magnesium sulfate, which helps with the calcium to magnesium ratio. Now, I'm not as concerned with that when we're making a product like this, but when we're adding water soluble, I wanna make sure that I have calcium, magnesium, and I also have the phosphorus, and that they don't antagonize each other. If I just load it with just calcium and phosphorus, it might need some of those uh, magnesium or other minerals. So our best way to balance that was to keep it close to a seven to one ratio of calcium and magnesium, a 10% calcium and a 2105. The reason the 10 and 5 are important is uh, we like to have double the P to K, a 2 to 1 ratio. Now these numbers aren't actually phosphorus, it's phosphate, and this isn't actually potassium. The way that they break it down in the label, it's like P205, there's oxygen in there. And so to get to actual phosphate instead of phosphorus, you have to read between the lines there. And so when you're doing the math, I just like to see a two to one, although it's not exact when you really get into it. So this is a little more than a 16th of a teaspoon, so let me put some back. I just wanted to drop it in here so you can see what it looks like and mix it up. That's it. 
goes into water. There might be a little bit in suspension there, and that's totally fine. It'll go through your chafing water wand. If there's a tiny bit left in your water can, it's not the end of the world. It is organic, so it's not gonna be perfect. But if you constantly keep it shaken while you're watering, it will stay in suspension like that. It breaks down pretty quickly. And one of the tricks of adding that little bit of the fulvic acid helps uptake the phosphorus. So one of my favorite products, small amount goes a long way. You can use it with this if your plants are growing bigger than you anticipated, or maybe you're running out of room to add more to the mulch layer. You can add it to your teas. It is a powder, so even though it's best in the water soluble, it's because it's so micronized and we spent the money to get it that fine, you can top dress with it. My thought is this, this is the slow release, this is the fast release. I follow the less is more approach by adding a little tiny bit in the water and doing it slightly more often. I think it's better than top dressing with this, but you know what, it works. And if I had to, I would dump this into some worm castings, mix it up, top dress with it. And one of the unique benefits of calcium phosphate is that it kind of hangs. It's got like this colloidal clay component and it will stay in the soil and continue to give. So when you're using this, use the less is more. If you start doubling the doses and doing it more often, you're gonna really build up your phosphorus very high in the soil, it's not ideal. Follow our recommendations and it'll work perfectly. Every time we do soil testing, this product works really well. So. That's what it looks like. You can see it's still in suspension. It's not like it just falls out, but if you're walking around with a water can, I do like to make sure that I at least shake it while I'm going to keep it really suspended and even in there. Let me see if I've got any other information here. The build a bloom we went over, really low heavy metals on this one. When we first tested it, it had very low, and then we removed the fishbone meal and we added in the mustard and the bran. And then here is the build a bloom. So this one was tested October 14th, 2022. And I'm making this video here in December. So, you know, a couple months ago, we're constantly testing. And you can see that the actual numbers came in at 3.31, 11.13, 5 5.6. So really it's a 3.11.5 on this random one. I took a bag off the shelf, sent it to the lab, sent it to Spectrum Analytic, and it came back a 3.11.5. Well, we're only promising 2.10.5, so we met that. But the reason I bring that up is a lot of manufacturers might call this like a 1, a 1.5, two or something, just so that they never have an issue. We're always trying to be as transparent as we can and test often and report. Then the rest down here, calcium 16%. So it was a little bit higher than the 10% minimum that we guaranteed, which is good. I like to see that. Then we go down, we got magnesium in there, which is at 2%, which is close to that seven to one. Uh, so that's really good to see. Zinc, arsenic, very low. Cadmium, almost non-existent. Cobalt, small amounts. Lead, small amounts. Mercury, pretty much non-detectable. Molybdenum, a little bit, which is great. Nickel, small amount, and selenium. So you can look up this report at buildasoil.com, go to Build a Bloom. In the top, you'll see some tabs. You can click on testing and you can print this one out so you have it for your files. Those of you that do, we like to provide all the information so that we're transparent. That's been the comparison of the Build a Bloom versus the Build a Flower. I like to use them both. If you have a big bed of soil, you may not need it, but the idea is to use a top dress to close that loop to make sure that when we go to harvest our plant, there's already something in there decaying. Other people will put their leaves, and when you put the green leaves and you have the wood in here, it starts to create more nutrients and long-term compost, plus the straw mulch that you have there. And then if you ever get behind it, you can water this in, either for instant gratification, fast reaction because you forgot the top dress, or just because your plant is really raging. So that's the story behind it. Phosphorus has been hard to get high numbers on organically without going to guanos or without going to chemicals that we don't like. That's really the main gist of this. I showed you the fish and the blue gold and the organics alive and lots of other options. I believe in them all. But the reason why we designed this is we wanted a calcium heavy, phosphorus product, low heavy metals that would be water soluble. That's a tall order. On top of that, the reason why we made this is we want you to add more to the mulch layer to feed the feeder roots. You know, when you're going into flower and your plant stretches, they double to triple in size sometimes. And if you're already root bound, the roots aren't gonna be able to stretch. And as above, so below, we wanna make sure part of the benefit of having a big container of soil is that when we flip the flower and the top grows a lot, the roots can also grow a lot. And if you don't have lots of room, adding fresh top dressing allows those feeder roots when it first goes into flower to really go crazy digging into their food. And I feel like plants are intelligent. If they dig roots in and feel like they have an abundance of food, they're gonna produce a lot. But if they're really struggling to get nutrients, they're gonna lower the amount of bud sites. They're not gonna try as hard to grow flower because they don't wanna die trying to grow too big of a flower before it actually finishes. In nature, its whole goal is to produce a seed. So when the nutrients aren't as abundant, I feel like the plant kinda of checks its checking account, checks its savings account, makes sure that it has enough for the job, and it plans accordingly for what type of plant it's gonna grow. A Couple of tricks to that is by using sub-irrigated planters, big beds of soil, 
top dressing that is um, activated with biology. All those are mentioned in the build a soil way. But this is just a comparison of two of our absolute favorite products, two of our highest rated products, and two of our best selling products. So we wanted to answer that. If there's something that I, I didn't answer for you in this video, I'd really like you to put the questions in here. And I'll refer back to these product highlights to make sure that both our customer service is able to answer these questions. And also that if there's something I just didn't think of that you guys have questions on, we're able to address it. So for those of you watching, I really appreciate it. If you made it this far, obviously you like this stuff just like I do. And I wanna encourage that. I want you to know more about ingredients, where these products got designed from, and we're gonna keep making these videos. So thanks, subscribe, like, tell your friends about these. Subscribe because a lot of times we're age restricted and it'll get you access to all the videos when they drop. We'll send you a notification. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on our next video.